this week's edition of Debriefing the Law. I am Joel Oster. I'm Chris Moreau. Hey, Chris, it's great to have you back um, from Germany. How life back now that you had a full week to kind of readjust to the American way of doing things? Do you, do you miss Germany? I do miss Germany, mainly because I don't stress when I'm on vacation and I come back to my job and I have roughly, I don't know, 60 cases pending in federal court this morning. So Is one of those the Trump life. indictment? Luckily, no, it is not. All right, good. Most of them have to do with motions to remove, well, so I, we're good. I am trying to live your life here. I am down in Florida trying to vacation, and that's the best time to do a podcast. I'm actually skipping a tennis uh, match this morning, but hey, I got golf this afternoon, Ooh. so it's all going to be good. But I did not want to skip this week's podcast because, man, do we have a not lot enough. to talk about. And as you and I were discussing in our pre-podcast you know, warm-up, there is a central theme to today's podcast. Now, the stories we're going to oh talk gosh. about range all the way from Trump being indicted for the umpteenth time and conference realignment. And the common denominator is greed. Apparently, greed is alive Absolutely. and well in America. Shocking. I know. Shocking. So we are going to see, show you how greed weaves in and out of, of today's uh, different legal stories. Uh, but hey, let's just start right off here with the Trump indictment. And I've lost count, of kind of like Nikki Haley. Uh, are we on five? Are we on six? Are we on four? Who knows? We kind of lost count on how many different indictments we have going on. But Chris, to, <laughs> to kind of get into this latest indictment on uh, Donald Trump, I'm going to tell you something that might shock you. It's going to disappoint you. It might even change okay. how you perceive the world. Are, are you ready for this? I am. Hit me. Politicians lie. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Did you know that? Oh my gosh. You know, I really, look, I bought a nice set of pearls for my wife when we were in Germany. I feel like I should wear them during the podcast so I can clutch the pearls every time. That's right. Because it's absolutely shocking to me that a politician, of all people, the most honorable profession. I mean, I, I, I hate that. America. When we were young, I guess I kind of thought that the politicians were the, the leaders of society. I went to, to vacation mm -hmm. Bible school, and I was taught that lying was bad. Oh. And you just always assumed okay. that adults would do things right. And politicians, mm. I mean... We, we, we idolize them as young kids. We assume. I mean, remember, remember Honest Abe? Yes, I do remember Honest. Good old um, modern politicians have never been known to be. I grew up in a house that hated Ronald Reagan and just railed on him for how horrible of a president he was. So I grew up very early on knowing that politicians were absolute garbage. <laughs> it's, it's kind of late in our friendship to bring up that kind of a shocker. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to process <laughs> that one. You don't diss on Ronald Reagan, right? the greatest president ever. They're making you room do. on Mount, Ru Mush nope. Mount Rushmore right now for his picture. Nope. No, I mean, sure. I mean, let's take another stolen artifact from Indian people and put another white man on it. I'm down. Hey, like, let's you go. Know what? No, like, no, no. You don't talk bad about good old Ronald Reagan. Not only was he a politician, he was a oh, Hollywood you actor. Horrible and you know person. Hollywood actors don't lie. So Horrible just stop person. it right there. Not at all. All right. Well, you don't. Not at all. They don't lie. They don't manipulate people for sex. Not <laughs> Hollywood is above reproach as well. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about Hollywood or are you talking about politicians? Well, let's just kind of go there. You don't have to go back too far in our nation's history, though we could because I do have a history degree, but you don't have to go back that far. Let's just go back to, um, oh, how about Joseph Biden? Joseph Biden said that he did not, on the record, he said he knew nothing about his son's business dealings or who his business mm -hmm. partners were. Yeah, by the way, this is the same mm -hmm. Joseph Biden who had to back out of the 1988 presidential race due to plagiarism. Chris, I don't buy that Joseph Biden knew nothing about his son's business dealings. You don't bring in millions and millions of dollars and just put a blind eye as to what your son is doing. You don't just get put on 20 phone mm -hmm. calls with his business dealings to kind of say, yeah, Papa Biden's there in the background without knowing what his son is up to. So I, I'm going to suggest that Joe Biden has not been the most forthcoming when it comes to truth matters. I like to believe that Joe Biden understands how the Fifth Amendment works. <laughs> Unlike another former president who doesn't understand that you need to shut up when you're being charged with crimes, always deny, yeah. 
Always did not. I know nothing. I know nothing. Not, I know not nothing. Not a bad idea. Uh, how about Adam, Representative Adam Schiff from California? He told the American people not oh. too long ago that he personally had seen hard evidence mm-hmm. that Trump colluded with the Russians and that soon he was just chomping at the bit he could reveal the actual proof yep. that he laid his own eyes on. Oops, that was a whopper of a lie. Uh, and so, um, there you go. Representative Adam Schiff told a whopper of a lie to the right. American people. Politicians lie. How about the Steele dossier yeah. that led to the Mueller investigation? Oops, another lie. The entire Russia. All true. Russia, All true. <laughs> the entire All Russian. True. 100% true. Well, uh, Mueller did not find things. So, Mueller said that there was absolutely nothing to the uh, Russia collusion. There was nothing there. And so, hey, you know what? Why not start off? He said there was nothing there to charge a sitting president. There's no, a no. difference. Uh, he said there is no obstruction. Nothing to start. He, he found something with obstruction. There was sitting. no collusion. Sitting. Sitting president. L- 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 but I mean, let's. I mean, we could talk about the whistleblower that has never materialized on the Republican side, or anything that Ted Cruz says. You can a hundred percent assume is a lie. And then you got Rand Paul, who doesn't know the difference between a sunny day and a hole in the ground. So and let's not I, get back to it's, the. It's a full. Let's go ahead and get back to the most lie uh, of, of recent memory. Yeah. Bill Clinton, who said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And so, yeah, and I, I think you can make my point. That's true. That's, that's a great lie. It depends on what the definition of is is. Yeah, don't try that one at home. That was no. My, I love that one. That's no. You nope, will get burned if you try to nope. debate the definition of is. What the is right. is. No, that, that's not going oh, no. to work. No. Uh, no, so in my heart of hearts, no, I, I do, Chris, believe that George Washington never told a lie. But after that, it's been one big whopper mm-hmm. after the other. So. That being yeah. said, Chris, that I want to lead off with that, that politicians lie. And it, it's not a recent memory. It's, it's standard operating procedure, and I hate that. I, I hate that. Which leads me to my disclaimer for what we are about to talk about. Chris, I don't like to defend liars. They don't deserve it. Uh, let them face the consequences of their actions. I don't like being put in the position to defend liars, but that being said, that's what I'm, I have to do today. Hopefully you can take the other side. But I, I think that because what is going on with this fourth indictment against Trump is weaponizing the criminal court mm-hmm. system against politicians who lie, and that is a very, very dangerous precedent to set. It sets us as a nation down a path that I do not want to go. And, uh, and so I just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. I don't like this. That I don't like to defend liars, but it seems like that's what we have to do if we do not want to weaponize the federal criminal system. Hmm. There's a there's a lot to unpack there, because when you lie and certain events take place, that's a criminal. Well, hold on, not necessarily. And so, not necessarily. Yes, ne- Right. That's why I said when you lie and certain events take place, that's a criminal there, there, action. That is a true statement. Not all events. I can lie. I can if I lie on my taxes, that's a criminal event. If I lie and people kill other people, that's a criminal uh, event. If I lie and you, you start a riot, that's a criminal no, 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 you, event. If I lie and I obstruct a police investigation, that's a criminal event. So, yes, there are certain things that if you lie, if I lie on the stand, that is a criminal action. That's true. When you are on right? the stand There's, swearing to tell the truth, but your earlier statement, I want to point out something that you just glossed over. Maybe you did it intentionally. Maybe you did it unintentionally. Mm-hmm. There is a crime called incitement where you are inciting someone mm-hmm. you because of your words you incite right. someone to lawless action that is a crime yeah. i will agree with that uh chris do you know what is not among all one of these four charges against donald trump incitement, incitement. what the one thing right. that actually is a crime right. is not one of the counts against mm-hmm. trump right because that would be one it's very very difficult to prove Two, there's a big free speech element to it that says his words weren't, they weren't, um, what is it, directable or directive enough to consider to be incitement. And three, we don't want to chill free speech if we can't have an iron case clad against it. Like, those three things led, I, I would assume, and I'm not saying that I know Jack Smith personally and we have coffee together, 
but it would make sense to me that because you don't have an ironclad like case of incitement because the way that Donald Trump speaks is in such a vague way that it could have been incitement it could have not been incitement we don't know and since we don't have a strong enough case against that we're not going to charge I think him with it. That's a great concession you but made. But we do have strong enough for right the, out of the gate that there before. is not enough uh, evidence there to charge what actually is a crime, incitement, and so that we're left with the four counts. Let's analyze these four counts. We have um, uh, count one, mm-hmm. uh, 18 U.S.C., uh, section 371, conspiracy to defraud the United mm-hmm. States. Count number two, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Count number three, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. I have no idea how that's really any different from count number two. And then count number four, the most ambiguous and vague count, conspiracy against Right. And so, again, what is not there Mm -hmm. is a count, a charge of incitement. And that is, Chris, that's what that is at the bottom of all of these charges that Donald Trump said something and his words incited people to lawless action. The fact that they did not bring Mm -hmm. the one charge that actually is a crime. I think is telling, and at the end of the day, what we're what I'm going to get at is that this is a political indictment that's going to set our nation down a very dangerous wow. path, and that's why I got to say this is this is a horrible. Even I do not want to defend a liar, and we're going to get there with all the lies. I think the fact that there is no incitement charge is huge to understanding the political nature of this uh, of this indictment. I mean, I respectfully. In all due respect, absolutely disagree with you, Joel. And I think that's been par for the course for our podcast for pretty much the entire time. Um, these four charges are their uh, their elements are clear. They are supported by the facts within the indictment. They are supported by the facts, um, the evidence that is available, and they're um, able to be prosecuted in a non political fashion. The fact that we're still focusing on the idea that just because Donald Trump is a former president, that all of a sudden everything we do against him is political feeds into his narrative that somehow he is the victim here. In, in essence, he is the perpetrator. If this was me or if this was you, Joel, it wouldn't be a political hit. And we would have got charged with 27 other, other charges that the DA would have stacked on there or the DOJ would have stacked on there to make sure that we go to jail for the now, rest there, of there our lives. There is no crime The fact here. of the matter is... No crime. There, There is four crimes here, as a matter of fact, and he's guilty Zero of all crimes. of them. And he so is. So let, let's go... Let's, and it, it go would... On. Holding politicians to this higher standard now is a great direction to go down because then maybe we won't have the politicians sitting there lying every single time when they're at their seats at Congress. Maybe, and call me crazy... Maybe if we took the entitled group of Congress and the political elites of this country and held them to a standard rather than giving them carte blanche to do whatever they want, America wouldn't be in the crappy place right, that it is go. now. Let's go. Call me crazy. <laughs> no, I, you might be on to something. I would, I would love it if your utopian view of society wouldn't work. We can go back to George Washington days where our politicians never mm, said a no, lie. No, we don't want to go back no there. No one's going to, you know. But they had No slaves. one's going to put the nickname of, of honest on good old, you know, uh, honest Trump. No, that, that's, that's not going to be a thing that's ever come from anyone's mouth. Honest all right, Obama. Let's unpack the, these four uh, counts. They all hinge on really one. I hate to say the word conspiracy. Uh, I'm going to use the word um, uh, uh, agreement, a uh, strategy session. And so here is what it's all about. Trump had this idea. I don't know if actually Trump came up with it or one of his advisors or co-conspirators came up with this idea. But they did not He'll want take credit for it, though to certify a certain a slate of state electors. So, you know, whenever you have a presidential election, Correct. states will appoint a certain slate of electors that then go to D.C. on mm-hmm. January 6th, and they vote for the next a president. And so Trump had this thought of he wanted yeah. Pence, who was the incumbent vice president, to mm-hmm. not certify mm-hmm. certain states a slate of electors. That was his theory. Correct. Is this a fanciful theory? Yes. Is this a Hail Mary of a theory? Yes. But people bet on long shots all the time at Vegas because the payout is higher. 
This was a theory that I am going to suggest is not sanctionable. It is not a crime. This is a legal theory. It's it's a Hail Mary of a theory, but it is not a crime. So that really is the is if you look at all four uh, claims, it all kind of goes to this one thought of we want Pence. We want this political outcome of Pence when he is the vice president certifying these slate electors that he will not certify mm-hmm. certain states electors. So, Chris, would you agree that that is kind of the whole uh, c- centerpiece, if you will, of, of um, what Trump is trying to do? Except for one one small part that is left out. They did overt acts to stop and to instruct Pence and to obstruct the voting of course. portion this, of it. Chris, this is a political outcome. Right. They so wanted the, a political outcome, so they're going to take overt acts to achieve this political right. outcome. That is done all of the time. People want political... Th- Which is no, no, crime. it's called lobbying. When you want a, pol- when you want a certain political mm-mm, decision mm-mm. in D.C., Money you hire water, lobbyists Joel. to re- obtain a political outcome. Do lobbyists lie? Yes, lobbyists lie to achieve a political outcome. But that is a political outcome. They wanted Pence on January 6th to not certify certain states' slate of electors and to say this is confusing and to send it all back. I am going to suggest that that political outcome is crazy. It's it's out there, but it actually has some basis in the law. But you're muddying the waters. You're saying that the president, the vice president, cabinet members, the attorney general, and electors from the GOP are the same as paid lobbyists, which are regulated under federal law. The one side, the lobbyist, it's their job to influence the political process through a very regulated and mostly ignored system of rules and, and checks and balances. Whereas the president of the United States was asserting his political pressure over governors and secretaries of state to change the outcome of the election, which is something that the president in all of his power could do. So by saying that the president lobbying That's a a clear understatement of what actually happened. The president asserted presidential powers, tried to use his powers vested in him, unfortunately, that he received at the fact that he lost the election in 2016, but only won because the Electoral College is idiotic. And he then tried to overturn the election and disenfranchise millions of voters. That is very different than lobbying to get... A pork belly spending in an now, I would bill. suggest the politicians, president, senators, representatives, they lobby all the time. If they want a certain bill to be passed, they're going to go to one senator and say, hey, how can I get your vote on this? They do that all of the time. This is a political outcome. But this is when lobbying. the vice president. It's and not. so if you read the, um, the, the indictment, the, and this was, kind of yeah. supports my position. I think this is a political indictment. The, um, uh, the prosecutor said that um, this, the VP's role is a ceremonial role. No, it's not. The VP actually has a real role to play in certifying electors. Let's go over the history here a little bit. But, you know, back in the 1700s, when certain state electors were, would show up in D.C., there was some issue. Is this the right slate of electors? You could see how there might be some confusion. We don't, it's not like we had the, the TV, the internet right. that we have today, uh, pictures or whatnot. They didn't even have a camera back then. And so that was a real rule. The vice president had to say, yes, this is the correct slate of electors. Well, there was some controversy in about uh, 1870, uh, and so there was another law that was passed. Again, critically giving the vice president some powers and certifying which was the correct slate of electors. And there's objections mm-hmm. all the time. I found one in 2000. Remember the 2000 presidential election between Bush and Gore? And there, there was an objection that Bush was stolen. made to the vice president, Al Gore, saying, look, this process wasn't mm-hmm. a- applied correctly, and you need to uh, reject certain these the certain state uh, slate of electors. The vice president, mm-hmm. Al Gore, says, no, I'm going to uh, reject that, uh, that motion, whatever it was, and did not grant that objection. Yep. This is not a ceremonial role. This is a real role the vice president had. Now, Chris, I am going to give you, this is a Hail Mary of a pass. Absolutely, this is a long shot. But it's not criminal to have a legal theory that is a long shot legal theory. It's uh, I don't think it was going to work. I think it was doomed from the beginning, but it doesn't mean you get thrown in jail. 
yes, like this is this is my frustration with this entire indictment thing is that yes, you're looking in a very specific silo, 1798. Right now, the vice president doing the electors is a very ceremonial thing because we have a thousand different ways to verify these people now that they show up to Washington. They've already been vetted by staff and verifications. Yes, in 1700s, yes, it was a power. In 2020, it is it is not the same. It is the same way of lo- it, looking at a lot of different things, which. I'm going to hold back on. But the fact of the matter is, yes, it was a Hail Mary legal play. Great. We're on the same page there. Where we differ and where our two paths diverge is that you think it's just a political play. You think it's yes, just a Hail it Mary. Is a political play. These people acted. They absolutely acted on that political play and intended to dis- disenfranchise hundreds of thousands of American voters of their right to choose the president of the United States. So much so that we've gone through 60 plus court cases disproving this theory that they fully acted on, that they obstructed of justice with, and that they tried their very, very best and did everything within their power to the point of literally inciting well, no, a riot. No, no, no. Remember, remember they did not put in incitement. They are absolute <laughs> traitors, and they Chris, should be Chris, in got, jail. Every single one of them. Because them. they didn't put incitement. I would agree if they actually incited. They, that's they right. They did not they incite did not a riot. Put incitement. There would have been an incitement charge but that's what if he they did. did. That's no, what he did. They would have, there would have been an incitement yeah. charge. doesn't matter if there's a charge or not. It doesn't matter if there's a charge. It's I, what I agree he did. that's what people think. It's exactly what went on. Donald Trump is the greatest traitor in u.s right, history well, let, and you can take that to the bank he deserves to be in prison until he right, is dead go, and i'm not i'm not backing off of that go, anymore i'm, I'm tired back, of it go, we're done he, let's go back to traitor. our legal theories here and so the deal is that pence acting in yep. that role that is a valid role it has not been ceremonial in uh, 2000 actually there, there are motions to object to a certain slave electors he has to rule on those now here's the legal theory that yep. it was played out there and that is this under the independent state legislature theory, the state legislators are the ones who Which are who control how elections are done. Where do they get that role? That power? It's in the U.S. Constitution. It says that the manner of a federal elections if by each state should be determined by each state's legislature. Well, here's the problem from this recent election. A lot of you know governors and administrators and uh you know and you know election commissioners stepped in and changed the voting process so the argument could be made and chris it is a hail mary of a pass i will grant you that but the argument could be made that when the governors when the state administrators came in and you changed the way in which the federal elections took place that usurped the power of the state legislatures and so therefore the the, the process was invalid that is a valid legal argument. When I say valid, I mean it's not sanctionable. Is it a far-fledged argument? Yes, it's out there. Would I put any money on its being successful? No. But just this last year, the Supreme Court ruled on that. Just this last year. So how is this not an open issue in 2020 when that matter ends up going to the Supreme Court just this last term? And so that's my theory. The, the matter went to the Supreme Court. Well, the matter went to the Supreme Court because there's a constitutional right to vote and Alabama obstructed that right to vote. I mean, that's a, that's a Supreme court question all day long. If this was a true, uh, a independent state legislature issue, none of the state legislatures have, have had issues with it. The only people that are having problems with how the election went in 2020 is Donald Trump and his team, Donald Trump and his cronies and traitors are all worried that they didn't win the election, which they didn't, and we can all agree on the fact that they didn't win the election. But they went through every hoop humanly possible. They exerted every bit of political power. They obstructed everything they could to stop the certification of a valid election. But here's my point. And to this day, people are still like, oh, we don't know who won the 2020 election. This is also what's dangerous to America. I get that, and politicians do lie, and I don't like it. But the point here is that this is a valid legal theory. Is it a Hail Mary? Is it a long shot? Yes, yes, and yes. But you don't get thrown in jail because you come up with a legal theory that is a long shot. That is not a, a sanctionable argument. That is not an argument that, uh, you know, should throw you in jail. Here you go. I'll give you, I'll give you another valid legal theory, right? I'll give you another valid legal theory that got a client in jail. I had a client when I was a criminal defense attorney. He was a drug dealer. 
fair enough, he's in prison still for dealing drugs. He put all of his drugs in pill containers, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The valid legal theory was that that's his medicine and that he was dividing it up so he would not overdose right. on it. Valid legal theory. Absolutely valid legal theory. It's still illegal to possess right. it. There you go. Still illegal. So it's still illegal to obstruct justice, even if it is a valid legal theory that you're no, trying to no, operate on. That's where under. we got to draw the line here, because the actual illegal act here is incitement. So let's go to that now, because let's go to the different paragraphs where they alleged what it was that Trump actually did. You mentioned, oh, they took overt acts. Well, let's actually see, he according to the it. indictment, the best evidence they could find of what Trump did. So we go to paragraph 87 of the, uh, the indictment, and it oh. says that Trump tweeted, big protest going on. Okay, what, big pro. So Trump wants to have a big protest on January 6th. That does not sound like star, storm the, ca the, 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 the capital there. So we're going to do a protest. And then in paragraph uh, 116, it says that, uh, again, the, a peaceful protest was going on. And, uh, and, and they say, that, hey, the election was stolen, but that we need to do this peacefully. There is nothing in this indictment where Trump tweeted out, let's storm the Capitol, let's do whatever. He says, whatever we do, let's do it peacefully. And we believe the election was stolen. So, Chris, my thought here is that because there was no incitement, they knew they could not get him for the one thing that actually would be illegal. So all we are left with is Trump's having pursuing this legal theory, which was a Hail Mary, and not being successful. Because at the end of the day, the person who was to take this action was Vice President Pence, and he said, nope, I'm not going to go there. I, re I know what you're doing. I am rejecting it. I think that'd be a horrible precedent for our country, and thank God that Vice President Pence has said that. I am so happy he did, and he shut, he shut Trump down in his actions. That is our American democracy working. Kudos to Mike Pence. But you don't throw Trump in jail because he tried it. You yes, throw you him do. in jail if he incited a yes, riot. There yes, is no incitement. Bring an no, incitement charge. You throw him in jail then. for the obstruction. You throw him in jail for the obstruction charge. Paragraph 93. Paragraph 93, and his lawyer, John Lawrence, went on Fox and Friends, because I was at the gym this morning, Joel, and for some reason, the gym hates me, because all they do is put on Fox and Friends on every Ooh, TV screen, and better. I'm sitting there hating my life on the elliptical, looking at Mark, uh, what is his name, Mark Levin, I don't know, Life, Liberty, and Levin, and Fox and Friends that play when I'm on the gym, I, ugh, kills me. But the defense attorney, John Lawrence, went on and admitted the fact that Donald Trump ordered Mike Pence to ignore 205,000 votes in Pennsylvania that were to be delivered from from um, Joe Biden over to Donald Trump, which would have delivered him Pennsylvania. He ordered Mike Pence as president to ignore those votes. That His lawyer admitted that on national TV to a friendly audience of Fox and Friends. That is admitting that he attempted to obstruct the election. It doesn't say order. And just because the, Mike Pence said no. Um, where does it say that? The lawyer went, the, the lawyer went on TV it, and it's said It's not in the indictment. The and even if he, it doesn't matter if he that it's said not in the it, indictment. It, 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 Admission against self-interest. And self even if he said that, Pence said, Admission no, I'm not going to do that. So Trump... Tr That's fine. Just because, you, just because you said no doesn't mean the order of, of obstruction... Obstruction doesn't require the actual obstruction to happen. You have to order the obstruction to happen. And because he ordered it, that's obstruction. That is obstruction of rights. That is obstruction of an election. Like, fish get caught by the mouth, Joel. The lawyer went on TV and confirmed that this conversation happened, confirmed that Donald Trump ordered him to do that. That's obstruction on their own TV so show. So for the record, when you go back through the, the indictment, what I skimmed over, it was about 40 pages where Trump just blatantly oh, lied yeah. about uh, election interference and the issue and we even mm -hmm. said this on our podcast at the time i believe i said look hey fox news you're running a special on the election fraud now would be a good time to actually bring out the facts Such a joke bring out the examples because we're waiting for you to do this and of course it never came out because there was no fraud to the extent that it would have changed the outcome of the election you oh, might yeah. find one of two dead voters here dead voters there cast, casting ballots but it wasn't gonna you know it wouldn't be two ten thousand a hundred thousand enough that would actually change 
change the outcome in any one state. So there was no overt fraud like that. And Trump kept pu pushing that narrative, saying that narrative that it was stolen for these specific reasons. Uh, and of course, we know that to be uh, untrue, at least at, to this point now, what, two, right. three years later after multiple lawsuits, no one has come forth with any evidence of this. And so, yeah, this is all made up. Uh, that being said, so again, I go back to what I started with. Politicians lie. We get that. We know that. Are you going to now weaponize our, our criminal our court system yes. to go after every politician yes. that lied? So Schiff Burn, now should also be facing yes. an indictment. Why are they not indicting him? Yes. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. I don't know. Ask the courts. Ask because, your buddies. Ask why the Republican Party that was in charge during this entire time when Schiff was lying that they did absolutely I, I, nothing. I, I, I mean, you only have to look at the circle that is the Republican Party – pointing guns at themselves because they're not prosecuting people for fear, lying. It's a I do crime. Fear that's where we are at right now is that Prosecute. now everything that a politician says or does will result in an indictment by the other side. Once they get into power, Great. I do not I like it. that. I, I think yes. it's a banana Republic kind of thing. Do it. Uh, now, again, am I defending nope. Donald Trump? No, he lied blatantly out his backside throughout this whole process. He, he could have done the spot. Think about how politician, well, think about how politicians would have to react if they knew that if they lied and it was provable that they lied, that they would no, be no, brought up on charges. No, no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't think work of, just that for way. A second. Yes, I will it, agree when Trump says the things that he did and lied, that's one thing. But that's not what we're worried about. Now that you've weaponized where you can go after anyone for good. maybe saying something that you disagree with. That's the point. With, you can take any middle of the – Not disagree. No, you could. It's that's how it works. Trump it, – no, it's not how it works, Joel. You and I are both lawyers. We know how the justice system works. If you can, if you can muster up enough facts and evidence to convince a jury of your peers, right? So now we have to either be the United States criminal justice system is not the best criminal justice system on the planet, which we have touted for many years that we're the most just and we have the most free, or we have to announce that we're a banana republic because there is no middle ground at this point. Either we are what we are or we are what we say we are. And right now, Donald Trump, is going to prison, hopefully, for the rest right, of his let's life. Let's talk a little bit about that now. I don't think that this will actually survive to see trial. Maybe it will. I, I do believe the claims are so weak. I get what you're saying, but I do believe what you're talking at is the level of saying you want the law to be in such a state that it actually would criminalize this kind of blatant lying. I My position is, if that's what we like, I would agree that's nice, but that's not the law. The law is incitement. You actually have to have the magic words that incite someone to imminent lawless action. The law is, and they did not bring that charge here. There is no incitement going, charge. You don't need like you and Fox and friends and all of these conservative people. And I love you, Joel. You're one of my best friends. You're focused on this idea that incitement alone is what, sh what he should have been charged with when there is plenty of evidence to charge him with these other four crimes. And it's easier to prosecute. And it's a, it's a harder, a harder to stick case. They can nail these four charges just because they didn't charge Donald Trump with the crime that you feel he should be charged with does not mean he is not guilty of these other four crimes that he so did. You're commit. a criminal. I would like for him to be charged you're with you're everything. In the criminal justice system. All the way. Uh, so if someone right. brings a, an indictment against someone and there's no basis in mm -hmm. the law for that indictment, the is there like, I, I'm on the civil side. I would file a motion to dismiss before the case right. ever gets to trial saying, look, right. even if what they have alleged in the complaint is mm -hmm. true, it's not a crime. Does that same process right. exist in the criminal side? Oh, yes. Okay. So the, let's say you it's the, every every time I got a criminal defendant, that's the first thing I would do was would file it was called the 1385 motion, California Penal Code 1385, which is um, insufficient evidence to okay, sustain. That's going to be filed. Uh, it's going to be rejected because this is in front of a very um, um, a Trump hating judge. I, I think most people will, will agree with that. Not even and close. So, Not even so, close. Not even. Cl that's another thing that muddies the water that's pissing me off right now, Joel. Like, the minute that this – it doesn't matter what judge got appointed. When the – this this judge is on a random docket. It randomly gets appointed, just like the judge in Florida got randomly appointed that happened to be a Trump appointee. It's not that there's some conspiracy that this left-leaning judge, which she isn't even a left-leaning judge – like somehow weaseled their way into. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but I also have to respectfully disagree. If I have a case and it's before, let's just Fine. say uh, Gorsuch, and I have a case uh, that's in front of, let's just say mm -hmm. Sotomayor, 
I, I know what the outcome right. is going to be, and it's going to be the opposite from what the other judge, justice, would rule. Because sometimes we know how justices are going to rule on certain matters, and here I do think this judge will find that there is a uh, criminal, a crime that has been alleged, and will let the case go forward. So my question then is going to be, if yeah. that is that appealable, can Trump then say, "Look, you rejected my motion to dismiss. Can I? Can he immediately file an appeal?" At, at, at the, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Yes, you can hold the trial and file okay. for appeal. You can also file, you get as a criminal defendant in most states. I can't speak to the district because I didn't practice there. But in most states, right off the bat, you are allowed to what's called point six, which allows you to have the judge that's currently um, on your case removed from your case. And you don't have to show cause. You can just say we want a different judge. Okay. And so I think you can do that at the federal district level, but I'm not so 100% that sure. So that will be done. So I would file that, that motion too. That will be done, and it will yeah. end up at the U.S. Supreme Court, I think, before there's ever a trial. Bottom line here is I don't see this getting to trial. Cause, but let's just assume that it does get to trial in D.C. I think Trump is in a lot of trouble. I, the, the politics of the D.C. Yep. jury pool, I, I believe it's like 90%. Uh, Democrat, 10% Republican, uh, something like that. And I, it is possible they could find 12 Trump-hating jurors on this this jury pool. And I do think this thing is a political pro- prosecution. It will be a political verdict in that people will w- want to say, look, he, he's guilty, he lies, we don't like that, we need to have that as an outcome. So if it does go to trial, I think there's a good chance we get a guilty verdict in D.C. Do you, do you agree with that? Hopefully. Yeah, I don't think it's a good chance because it's political. I think it's a good chance because he committed these crimes because it was outlined. I get that, them. but let's just say hypothetically, let's just say waters. hypothetically, this Hypothet- were filed. In, I don't. Let's just say Alabama. You know, I'm just trying. I sure. shouldn't pick on Alabamans, but you know, I'm trying to say, right? Some place where a bag of red hats red state, are right? worn everywhere by everyone. Yeah, Utah. You're not getting um, a conviction. Would you agree with that? Yeah. No, I don't agree with that. I agree that he would still get convicted under any court in the land. I would put money on it. And we can do a change of venue. Let's put it in the most reddest of red states. Right? Put it in Nebraska. Put it in um, Tennessee. Put it in South Carolina. Put it in Ohio. Put it in um, Mont- Wyoming, Montana. Somewhere in there. Right? Take, take it even further. Put it in like the panhandle of Idaho where they don't have internet or TV except for Fox News. And he will still be All convicted. Right. Because he committed crimes. There you go. Well, um, and then and then what? And then what? He gets convicted in a red district, and then what? What do we have to say about it? That somehow the Democrats infiltrated the panhandle of yeah, Idaho. I don't think I, I don't think there's a like, shot you can get twelve people unanimously to say that Trump is guilty under under these charges. I, I get, if there were incitement. Yeah. I think that, um, well, I'm not even going to go there. I, I don't think that the court's going to allow this to go forward because there is no crime here. If, if they actually had alleged incitement where he, his words actually led someone to imminent lawless conduct, that's incitement. That is an uh, illegal act. What we have here is Trump wanting a political outcome. He wants Pence to, um, to not certify the slate of electors, and he was unsuccessful. He lobbied hard for it. He lied in the process to, uh, to, to Pence and to the American public. I will grant you that. So he's not, I don't even want to, to defend him because what he did was despicable, I think, and I don't want him to be elected. Let's, let, let's go to that now. Let's go to that thought process. Where do we go from here? Are these indictments working? I've been maintaining the reason why they brought these indictments is because they want Trump to get the Republican nomination because they know that's how you know, those kind of things work. His base will rally around him. They'll get him enough votes, and then he's going to lose the general election. And so I, I think these are working. I think the Democrats are going to get exactly what they want here. I think Trump is going to become the Republican nominee, and then he's going to lose to Gavin Newsom or whoever runs on the Democratic ticket. My question in all of this is why do we think that Republican voters are so stupid that bringing, even in your terms, political hits against this man makes him more valuable of a target for president? Why do we assume assume people are so dumb to ignore ev- – look – I, I'm I'm reading up on Tim Scott. I'm reading up on Nikki Haley. I'm reading up on Chris Christie. There's a lot of Republicans in the field right now, 
right? And we can both agree, and I think we have on this, that Trump is the worst candidate for a president on the oh, Republican I will agree. side. I think we can I think we can agree on that. So why do we assume that the Republican base is so stupid <laughs> and so easily manipulated that this would be the the unifying factor that would bring this base together to reelect or attempt to reelect Chris, Donald Trump? I hate to say this. I, what, I don't have a response. I don't know why we are so stupid just, that we and, are going to let and, him. And, 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 and honestly, like, it's not a Democrat or a Republican. Like, I don't want to say, like, that Democrats are any better, right? If you if you try to, like, impeach Biden, that's going to rally Democrats to reelect Biden. I, I fully believe that that's going to happen. So I don't want to say it's indicative of the Republican Party because it's not. But I don't why? Know. I we, don't know. I, and this is where I'm at a complete Here, loss. Here's my why? hope. Here's my hope. You can you can pick Tim Scott. You could pick Nikki Healy. You could pick Chris Christie. You could pick uh, T- Ted Cruz. You could pick all these other people that are are not political a holes and are not going to make our country look like we're stupid, right? And and all this does is it weakens our position in foreign influence more than anything else. I mean, it divides the country, but. Like when I was traveling around Europe, I almost felt like I needed to apologize for being an American because of some of the stuff that was coming out all the time. Like all the stuff that was coming out while I was in Germany. Like I'm trying to like, cover it over there. Sorry, guys. America's going. Wow. Oh, yeah. Full on. Right. Like, sorry, guys. America's going through some things right now. Like we're, we're, <laughs> we're working on us. We're trying to like we're trying to grow from this. Right. But here's my hope. Know, if we're the, if we're the superpower of the world, man, we're the laughing stock. Here's of the world my now. hope, uh, and that you just mentioned, you ticked off a lot of great candidates that I can support. But the problem is, there's four or five of them. There, there needs to be one. So my hope is, after the second primary, let's say everyone but the whoever's in second place, right. you have to drop out. It needs to be Trump v. Scott. Trump v. Nikki Whoever. Hayden, whatever. Not Pick Trump v. the rest of the field. He will beat the rest of the field. But my hope is that when you get to the middle of the primary season, all of these things will come out. And then the, the voter will say, yeah, maybe Trump shouldn't be thrown in jail. But come on. Why was he so stupid as to let this happen in the first place? you got to be smarter than that. you got to yeah. wear your big boy britches in D.C. and know that's how the game is played. And don't do stupid stuff like take all of these classified documents with you to Mar-a-Lago. Just be smarter than that. Turn them over. Don't take them. Why is he not smart? enough to know how the game is played and so i'm hope and that hits it as well why do you want a stupid president <laughs> right if look and you and i both when we were kids we were told that the president is the like highest most smartest most best representation that america has right idolizing presidents kids looking up to ronald reagan and jimmy carter and and gerald ford and even some misguided to bill clinton like people looked at the president and was like the president that that is our yes. city on a hill you know nikki haley but no here, here's my i want to no. make this point here then we probably can move on to the sports uh i gotta tell you <laughs> i am better. i am not i tell you where i'm at you know as far as who i want who i actually in my heart of heart wants to be the next president i believe who i want who i'm gonna put my support behind is uh, the senator from West Virginia, uh, whose name right now, Manchick. Um, Manchick. I've got, I, you think Joe I, Manchick? That's who I want to be the next president, and here's why. I do believe he is so middle. Really? Uh, he's a no, Democrat. But he's so middle of the road, he really wants to rule, I think, the, what's been best for America. Not for the Democrats, not for the Republicans. He wants to do what he thinks is the best for all of America. And we need that right now. Stop all this craving, you know, catering to your base. Let's get someone who actually wants the best for America in, in, in total and not just the crazies of the base. So I got to tell you, I think that's where I'm at in my heart of hearts. Mm-hmm. I want to see Joe Mankin, a mansion, be the next uh, uh, president. Right. My only issue with that, and I'm not disagreeing, I, it's not a theory I've really looked into. Homeboy is 75 years Which old. Which puts him about the right age to run for president. No. That's I know what, you're like, saying. I know you're why saying. Why can't we? I know. Like, come. Like, look, man. Like, 50s, 60s years old, 65. Like, if you are old enough to be on Medicare, right. 
you should not be running for president of the United States. <laughs> I, I I will agree with that. Right. If you were if your birth date is closer to Abraham Lincoln than it is to the current day, looking at you, Joe Biden, like come on, like Joe Biden was alive when Harriet Tubman was alive. That yeah. Like I like these things are insane to me. Well, there you go. They right like that is the, the the Trump indictment. You have the two different takes. What's going to be the oh actual outcome? Yeah. I have <laughs> not a clue on how, what's going to follow. But Gee, those geez. are our, our two takes on it. All right. Again, the, we are talking about greed, and I think greed is what's caused Trump to do the things that he did. He wanted to stay in office, uh, and so you do whatever he can, mm-hmm. even lie to reach that result. Well, greed is not just cabined in the political uh, sphere, and I also think it's hit conference realignments. Let's talk a little sports. Are you ready to talk a little sports? Oh, yeah. We Let's are do at this. conference realignment again. I don't know why we are back here again. It seems like we... Never, I guess, finished uh, the, the, the topic. Money, I don't money, know where money, we're money. all going. It's just one mega conference, two mega conferences. I don't know. Essentially, at, the NCAA is going to be like the NFL. I guess. Like, at the moment, be- uh, Arizona is, is discussing and voting whether or not they should join the Big 12. Uh, Colorado has already jumped yep. back to the Big 12. Who cares? That's where they came from, the Big 12. So I don't think really too many people mm-hmm. were upset about that. But it did kind of highlight that the Pac-12 is reeling. They can't get a media deal. And, Chris, I know why they can't get a media deal in the Pac-12. Because they don't have fans. No one cares about the Pac-12. Now, I know you don't live in California, but you're from California. From a Midwestern standpoint, right. we kind of think that they don't. They have better things to do out there in Cal- the West Coast than follow college football. Is there some truth to that? We do. Oh, no, we 100% do. Cal- like, college football is like a blip on what's really going on in California. Right? It's It's not... I mean, we have, well, we had four professional football teams and one professional or one NCAA worth talking about team. So, I mean, after USC, yeah, we could talk about Cal Bears and we could talk about UCLA, but nothing ever happens. We, it's, I mean, it's, it's like the literally. Fact is, yeah, they don't have a rabid at. fan base so. like they do in the Midwest, like they do in the Southeast, like they do in the right. Big Ten. And so those rabid fan bases, well, yeah, they, they will, you know, this, TV channels a, will pay big money. I have a very real theory. Right. I have a I have a very real theory on to why that is, and it's not tested. But in the Midwest and in the South, these towns and communities are yes. built around these right. college teams. Right? San Fran- like San Francisco is not built around Berkeley. LA is not built right. around USC or UCLA. Right? But like Fresno, which is kind of built around the Bulldogs, um, California State University, Fresno, their baseball, they're rabid about their baseball. Like it's one of the best baseball programs in the nation because the whole community is rallied around it. But you don't have that. Like Alabama and Clemson and Auburn and, you know, Kentucky or Nebraska Cornhuskers, right? You guys are built. The entire the, the state town is, built, is built, around, built around Nebraska football. Is built. Right. It's built around these things because that's what you have going yeah. for it. And not to say that that's a bad thing, but there's more things that are going on in California than So money football. is driving greed, is driving conference Huge. realignment, and Huge. where do you get the money? What is Where is the basis of the money? It's the fandom, the, the crazy rabid fans that watch every game, that buy the products mm-hmm. that are being that are sponsoring their games, and so you follow the money. And so right, and apparently they don't really care out there on the West Coast. But I guess the thought is, we want those teams because maybe eventually it'll catch on, and then that fan base might might care about it. So as we are speaking, Oregon and Washington, those are I guess the big uh, schools out there out west that people are, are clamoring for. They are talking about joining the Big Ten, and so we'll see if it, if it yep. goes that way. By the way, here's what has to happen when you add in these two extra schools. Then the pot of money that you had in the Big Ten now gets divvied up even smaller because are they really bringing in fan bases yep. from Oregon and Washington? 
Well, if so, why weren't they watching and paying attention before? What makes you think they're going to pay right. attention now? But you know, that, that's how I was driving this train. What really caught my attention, though, this last week was Florida State University. And they came out saying that they want more money from the ACC or they're going to bolt. I about lost my stomach. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. Florida State, you are demanding more, yeah. a bigger piece of the pie from your the conference that you are in. My one thought is Big 12, yeah. just say no. That will ruin the conference. If you yeah. have that kind of greed in the in your family, in your conference, that, that's what Texas was. We, I was so happy when Texas left the Big yeah. 12, and I just hope FSU is, stays away. No, I, I agree. I, and, it, and it's greed, right? It is absolute greed. I don't know why Oregon didn't stay in the Pac-12 because they were like the team. Like kids here in Arizona had the Oregon Ducks like jerseys. Like you saw it all over the place. It was the, the really like really sleek looking green with the gold feathers around the shoulder. Like they looked, man, just epic. But they they had they had fans based on how cool their, their jerseys were, but I don't know if that's gonna bring in the same money as moving over to the Big Twelve or the Big Fourteen or the Big Sixty Four, whatever I, it's gonna it, be. I think I think we're headed so, towards four conferences. We are headed towards the SEC, of course, is oh, always yeah. gonna be there. They they think they're the biggest and the baddest. Right. Recently they are, but not of historically. Course. Uh you have the Big Ten, yep. they're obviously gonna be around. Uh the ACC has an incredible media rights deal. I know Florida State said they want it out, but here's why that's right. just barking up the wrong Free because the um, ACC has their grant of rights, so their media rights, how they market them, Florida State University, they gave that under contract to right. the ACC for another 10 years. So any conference that takes Good for Florida them. State has to be subjected to the fact that ACC owns those media rights, media rights for the next 10 years. That is a great contract. And when the ACC adopted that, I thought this is what all conferences should be doing. This would stop this conference realignment madness. Conference Give the conference the next 10 years of your rights. And so, uh, like, if Florida State, if they went out of the ACC, it's really not going to happen. That, that would be way too expensive. No. All right. And then I think lastly, the Big 12. No, it was interesting was the Big 12 was about dead, what, five, six years ago? I mean, um, uh, Nebraska yeah. left, of Missouri left, Colorado left. Everyone thought the Big 12 was dead and dying. They thought that uh, Texas and Oklahoma was going to go to the Pac-12. That didn't happen. I think the reason why the Big 12 is in such a strong position is they are really trying to market themselves and get a bunch of city schools like, you know, uh, Cincinnati, like um um, mm -hmm. um uh, you know, TCU down there in, in Texas. Uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, Houston. They, they just brought in. So they're bringing in these schools that really kind of are in these big cities where there are, there are big markets following their team. I think that's mm -hmm. where the future is going to be, at least from the Big 12's perspective. So I think yeah. you're going to have four conferences in about, I don't know, 20 years, and that's what it's, it's going to look like. I, I agree, man. It, and then that's where the money's going to go, right? And then... With the college football playoffs the way they are now, staying in the Pac-12 would actually be a good idea for most teams because then they have an easier path to a bowl game. But at the same time, it's it's money. Like how 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 now that the NCAA may have to pay its players, how are they going to get more right. money? And that's I think going to be right, a concern. Chris, let me end here with uh, what I'm going to call the stupid legal news item of the week. I I always find these a little interesting this. when you get these crazy stories that are out there. Well, this is from Iowa State University. Hunter Deckers was their backup quarterback this last year. I think he started the year as their starter, yep. but then he got benched or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. apparently there's a, been a criminal complaint filed. So, again, Chris, criminal complaint. All right. Against Hunter Deckers. What did he do? He gambled on 26 Iowa State sporting events, including a 2021 football game against Oklahoma State. So he betted for his team against Oklahoma State. Now, get this. I, I haven't gotten to the best part of the story yet. He made 300 bets. Ooh, I love this. These bets totaled okay. $2,700. So these bets are like what nine dollars a piece? Ten, nine, nine, ten dollars. Chris, yeah. why is there a criminal oh charge God. being filed against someone who bet on his team for nine bucks? 
Same reason there's a charge against Pete Rose for betting on his team. They don't like it. He's not going being thrown in jail. Pete Rose, yeah, I get Kick him off the team. If he violated a team rule, I get that. Why does yeah, our criminal justice off. system not have better things to do than to pursue ten dollar bets where a guy betted for his university? Yeah, we have absolute. Well, I mean, again, small communities. You've tarnished the name of the program. You're right, going to that, jail. This to me was the kicker on how stupid this was. But apparently, he didn't even make the bets himself. See, he was under the age of twenty one, but a family member did it for him. So he didn't even make the bets, but his dad did or his older brother did. Why are you having a criminal complaint against someone for making $9, $10 bets for his team? Now, I get tanking. I get if he was betting against his team and he could control yeah. the outcome. I get how that's bad. But he wants his team to win. He's betting for his team, and then he's not even doing it, but a family member is doing it on his behalf. I don't see why this is worth any criminal, uh, you know, any prosecutor's time. Surely they have better things to do there in Iowa than to pursue these charges. Nope. No, it's an off election year. They have nothing better All right, to well, do. There you go. Hey, Chris. They're done. They're done growing corn. They're done growing corn. There's no election. Let's charge. Well, the golf course is calling me. I'm in Florida. I've got to go oh, attend. So but jealous. here's the deal for you. Have we reached a consensus on what should happen with our nation? I think we came close to reaching a consensus. Let's get that. Very, Let's get some Democrat or Republican close. right there in the middle to be the next president that we all can galvanize around. I'm even to the point where let's get a third yep. party. I, I've been there for a while, but we'll, we won't get there because of money. Again, oh, greed. Man. Agreed. Again, but maybe just maybe now is later. the time a third party candidate could get enough electoral votes that this gets thrown right. to the House of Representatives and then it's a free for all at, at that point. Oh, my gosh. I don't want anything to go to the House of Representatives. <laughs> That's a good point. All right. All right. Have a great week. Great week, Chris. And we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star review. We need your love to help us continue highlighting the funnier side of the law. I want to give a special shout-out to our Vice President of Operations, Wendy Oster, without whom this entire operation would be a complete and utter mess. Sean Wynn and 15 Five Features for making me sound way better than I actually do. Brooke Bolin for our marketing efforts. And Ryan Kuhn and Paul Kuhn of Tri- Plus City Marketing for our technical and computer support.